tight. Do you really know who the bloggers are? See, they're anonymous people. I could. There's a way that you could pull people's IP addresses and see who's actually leaving. Oh, you know those comments, but I kind of let people. I don't want to be one to censor people. Now, no. I could censor the comments. I could moderate the comments, but I don't really have time to read every. You know, some posts get a hundred, two hundred, three hundred comments. Of, I don't have time to read them all, then approve them. Read them all, then approve them. So I'm gonna be out and about, and I don't want to make it so people can't leave comments. Like I can make it so people have to sign up and register to be able to leave comments. But I could find out who people are. But I typically don't, because you never know. It might be like your friend, it might be your best friend. You might be heartbroken over it. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, a lot of the people that hate on, they know them. Like, right, right, right. Like people have. They to, laid a personal they, down. Yeah, if they come in on me, they're like, oh, fuck that white boy with blonde hair. You know, they know exactly who I. I mean, I've met them before. They know who I am. You know, either I'm friends with them on Facebook or right. Twitter or something like that. So they, you know, it, they know who I am. I know who they are probably, but. Mm. I mean, luckily, I don't get it as bad as some people do, but yeah. you know, it just comes with the territory, I guess. Yeah. Well, all you music dwellers out there, stop hating on each other and uh, just make sure your shit's wrapped tight. Holla. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. But it is no one's really making any money right now right. in the music industry. You know, like I like I mentioned earlier, you know, unless you're Wayne or Drake, well, you haven't really made any money. But he's getting tour money, and you know, Kanye and and these people, Ti, Jay. It's hard to make money to physically sell CDs, so you have to find other ways to do it, whether it be touring and and, and you know doing it because people don't pay for music anymore. A lot of people don't pay for music anymore. But um, what was the last CD you bought? Like a physical copy of? Physical copy. Yeah. <laughs> like six years. Like when I was in college, probably uh, 2004. College. What, what's your background? I went to Indiana University. Graduated in 2004. And like, what is it? I had a, a public management. Uh, it was a SPIA was the name of the school, School of uh, Public and Environmental Affairs, okay. what they called the School of Public Partying and Easy A's. Mm. So it was like a, it was just a, it was a, like a political science, like a political science. Like if you want to do politics or something right. like that, which I wasn't really into, I just knew it was kind of an easy major. Uh -huh. And then I had a minor in music. So I took, you know, classes like the history of music, history of rock and roll, history of jazz history of hip hop, I had to take music theory classes just so I could get a minor in it because I always dreamt about working for a label. You know, because things were still pretty good in 04, 03, 04 yeah. when I was, you know, in my senior, my fifth year, but, you know, things were still good. People were still set, buying CDs. And then I, I think it was really what it changed for me was like the summer of like, you know, 2004, 2005. That's when it really changed and it just became, people started downloading and downloading. Yeah. And then, that's when I really got onto it. I mean, I knew about it from since like '99, but then, it, like around '07, it just became too easy, and it was like. And what capacity did you want to be with a label? Is what? Really, I just wanted to do A and R. Like, I really wanted to do A and R, and then, and then you know, possi possibly move up into you know being a, a, a label owner or somebody in charge, an executive of, of some capacity. Well, you're but, definitely doing part of what the and r are doing yeah getting that, music, different you're getting that music right. out there right you're going out there you're looking for the artists and now all the artists are trying to get to you you know right. what i'm saying get and i want to help and i want to help people like i you know i, yeah. it's, 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 I think one of the things of an a and r is to help people decide between a good idea and a bad idea Heck yeah. and a lot of people can't tell the difference between the two now when now when they throw in a little bit of money that somebody never had right in their face you know right what I'm saying? exactly somebody that didn't have a small budget you know, yeah. what would they do? I mean, I started my website from nothing. I still don't make any money, but, you know, I make a little bit here and there, but it's nothing I can live on. But um, there is a lot you can do for cheap. And yeah. people fail to realize that they, they kind of, people might spend their money a little, you know, now instead of spending a ton of money printing up CDs, yeah. just get together a really, you know, get together a really good, you know, online package, put it in a zip file, make sure the artwork's included. Yeah. When people can download, you know what I'm saying. When people can download your music, when they download the project, make sure it, it can. It's a zip file. It goes right into your iTunes. That all the you know the track listings professional. People can see how to contact you in that. You know, instead of passing out CDs, maybe bring out a zip drive. So so if you see somebody important, there you know they they might they might be two bucks, three bucks a piece, but you can put your whole CD on there. And if somebody doesn't have to mess with the CD, they can just take the zip drive home. Like, Man, this is pretty cool. Somebody gave me the zip drive. This is different. You know, throw it in your computer. Boom. You can just click and drag it right into your iTunes. I know that's 
it's, it's, it, you can do the same thing with a CD, but a lot of times if it's off the street, the tracks aren't labeled on it. Mm. The cover art's on there. You know, you're spending all this money to get the cover art done. You want people to see it. You know, they want you want to see it in your iTunes. I don't know if you guys use iTunes to listen to. But that's kind of the standard now. Make it so when they look at the file, all the contact info is there. You know, just make sure that people can get a hold of you. And instead of chasing, you know, spending all this money on big features or big producers, just get somebody that you could make a cohesive song with, a project with. Like a lot of times, people instead of, you know, really sitting down and banging out a project that sounds good from front to back, that doesn't sound like it's all over the place. One song sounds like a Gucci song. The other one sounds like a Drake song. It sounds like Wayne. Like, you know, do it yourself. Do something that is on your own, and then you can blaze your own trail. Where would you hope to be in five years? Man, just doing what I love. Like, if I could get paid to do this and make a living doing this, like, you know, make a good living, comfortable, don't need to be rich, just, you know, I would be happy. I would be a very happy person. Um, you know, I think it's there's very few people in the world that get to do what they actually love and, and live well on it, live, be comfortable. You know, not not necessarily saying you have to be super rich, multimillionaire, just making a living, being able to take care of your family and, you know, being happy. I would be very happy doing this, you know, full time. It'd be great. It's just, you know, the reality of it is, you know, Chicago's expensive, expensive place to live. You're going to go out, you're going to go to these events, it's going to cost you money. When you put projects together, you need money. That's the sad thing about it. But what kind of music do you listen to? Like outside, of, not like when you're not working, you're just in the car. Man, I listen to only hip hop. I've listened to hip hop since I was eight. I'm 29 now, so I've been listening to hip hop for a long time, man. My first tape was DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. He's the DJ. I'm the rapper. That was the very first cassette I had, because um, there was that Freddy Krueger song on there, Nightmare on My Street, that I really liked. And then that kind of got soft for me. Like I was like, "This is," you know. So then I tra then I trans transferred over to Too Short and N.W.A. Straight out of Compton, and then Life Is Too Short. They all came out around that same time, and then I've just been on it ever since.